Welcome to Deca Sketch, where through banter and doodly doos, we cover the human side of careers in tech. And Ashton, today we're going to talk about behavioral interviews. Right on. So I'm going to ask you a few interview questions. Oh my gosh. Okay. I picked okay. three. Okay. Okay. Maybe ready. we'll just do I think, two. I think I'm ready. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, I picked two. All right. First one <laughs> okay. is if you had three slices of cake, how would you split it amongst eight people? Oh, come on. I know. I picked stupid ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh. These are actual interview questions, but I. So I stupid. would pick my top three favorite people. Whoa. Those eight, and I would give it to them. No, just Whoa. kidding. Just kidding. That would set you up for such a bad situation later. Oh, okay. I'm joking. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Have you have you asked this question in an interview before? Have you really? No, not like a real interview. I've asked it in mock interviews. Oh. Okay. I didn't want to, but I did. Okay. Other, I'm than, give you other than splitting the cake, I don't know. I can't get creative. I can't be creative with this other than cutting it chopping it up well i would ask people who wants cake and maybe not all people want cake right on and then go from there right and you hope that only three people say yes and i hope have... everybody says no <laughs> oh and then what then you eat it then i yourself. eat the cake <laughs> all right next one. Oh same, no same in the same vein oh god <laughs> If you were an ice cream flavor, what kind would you be? My gosh. Cotton candy, sickly sweet. What is sickly sweet? <laughs> very, very sweet. Look at me. Is that a Canadian yeah. thing? What, what cotton candy flavor? No, it was, oh, oh, you're describing the cotton candy. Yes. Yeah. Shouldn't you have said like maple flavor? I, I could if I. See, that's the problem with this question. I just did exactly the problem with the question. It's like prone to bias right. in, in so many, so many ways mm -hmm. because it's a preference. It has nothing to do with the person. Right. All right, last one. Oh, God. Convince me or sell me a pen. No. <laughs> by convincing me why it is more important than using a keyboard and typing. Oh, that's interesting. Um, well, studies out there show that you will remember more information if you write it. We don't have time for studies. <laughs> don't ask me to cite those. Up, I showed up late to this you interview. Know that that so. Writing stuff down helps you remember it longer. So if you want to remember stuff, write it down. That's with your actual most, hand every time i've given that question that's the most common i was well, expecting something true. from the boiler it's room of the person who's drawing with the pen that's true man wolf of wall street what was the movie where where they sold the pen boiler room boiler room i don't know well that, that's like a very common like businessy question thing about selling yeah. sell me this pen it's like a whole thing right yeah that's yeah. cool yeah yeah somebody in the comments sell us a pen <laughs> or something i'll buy the pen anyways like, you know, i'll buy all the pens. pens all right i just go to the craft store and it's like ah oh, so hey much. you buy the expensive shit like you go yes. all out yeah of course of big tools. ass markers yeah you have to have good tools like... it's the tool of your trade you have to get the good you have stuff to have the good stuff yes. well those are not behavioral interview questions <clears throat> okay we're guessing and I think largely in the world of tech, behavioral interviews have dominated, at least from my experience and any number of tech companies I've interviewed for, any number of interviews that I've given. Of course, it can't, you can't just rely on behavioral interviews because they don't address the very practical elements of some jobs like engineering. Like, <laughs> You know, you could do great at behavioral interviews and then walk in and be like, I don't know what a source code repository is. So right. I don't know what 
what I'm doing. But so there's other very practical things that have to happen. But I'm happy this this trend is continuing <clears throat> because behavioral interviews are harder to gain from the inner viewees side and from the interviewer's side they're much more holistic and less prone to bias because you're asking questions that tease out attributes without asking specifically about the attribute and when you're asked somebody specifically about an attribute of course they're going to tell you probably what you want to hear so in behavioral interviews it's as much about how you answer a question right. as specifically what you answer. And, and how can you spot a question from a behavioral interview? It's usually phrased as, tell me about a time when, which is fine because it makes it super easy. And each interviewer will tend to have a focus area. So one might be focused on growth, what might be focused on solving conflict, decision making, and each one is going to have specific areas that they're going to address, which we refer to as attributes. Um, and it's really good to know those if you can in advance. So the other thing that happens in behavioral interviews is it's usually not just one interviewer. Uh, and now when I think about in the past, like I would go in and I would interview with like maybe two or three people it feels weird. Uh, cause usually you have panels that are, uh, a breadth of skill sets, not all within the same function. That's also really important because sometimes, you know, previously you would be interviewed by people who would be all a part of the role that you're going into. And in, in good behavioral interviewing, you have people across the organization so that they can identify attributes and skills that, that you wouldn't find elsewhere. So now we can talk about how do you think about preparing and approaching these? Am I doing good, Ashton? You're doing great. Good. You're doing great. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying listening today. And Are you going to get mad at me at the end? Because I talk. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you sometimes do. Just kidding. She's never. Done that. Well, the first thing I'd say in preparing is that be human. Uh, I remember doing a behavioral interview once in the last few years. I'll be slightly vague about it. <laughs> and on paper. And that's a topic in its own, like, how do you do resumes? How do people look at resumes? All that stuff. But on paper, great candidate. Uh, got into the behavioral interviews and, you know, did the friendly banter at the beginning, which can always be awkward, but it's important. That's where, like, you need to just be yourself as much as you possibly can. I know that's hard because it's a stressful situation. You're being put in a stressful situation, but try to be human. Try to be yourself. And then we started to get into the questions and the responses. Um, I don't know the specifics, but like, uh, tell me about a time when you came up with an idea and you started a project and you found out that like it wasn't going to work out. And what did you do? So that might be an example of a question I gave him. And the response I would get really, like, well, you know, never had a project actually fail but if one did then I would learn from like not to do that same thing again or something's really silly I'm like right. okay this is a super canned response right and maybe the answer was spot on like yeah that's great you've never failed a project that's awesome uh but no, that doesn't feel right. Like it's not the way he responded to it just didn't feel right. And, and so that was, that's an important element because, um, 
part of behavioral interviewing is you, you can't hide behind canned answers. We talked about attributes. If you can find out the attributes beforehand, so hopefully you have a recruiter who is willing to prep you to some degree, and it is my strong belief that that should happen. Um, I know we've talked about neurodiversity and you know all that stuff. Like sometimes some people are just not good at interviewing. That should not reflect unless their job is to be a speaker and an interviewer that shouldn't necessarily reflect how they do their job so it's important if if recruiters have a chance to like prep you and say these are the people you're interviewing with these are the attributes each person is looking for then that is better because it gives you some time to think through it i don't think anybody benefits being surprised in an interview so if you don't get that. Hopefully you do, but if you don't get that, then I would ask for it. Just see if you can, can you tell me what attributes are gonna be interviewed for in this interview? The reason that's important is because what I found is that by keeping the core attributes in your mind, you can weave that through all of your responses. And sometimes they're obvious. Um, by the question itself, because you're not going to know the questions. That's fine. But they're not always obvious. So understanding what those attributes that they're looking for are will be really helpful for you to focus your responses. The other thing that I tell everybody now is that you should also really pay attention to how you feel in the room, in the situation, in the Zoom call, whatever it is, and recognize discomfort, recognize anything that feels off or red flag. Because when you do these interviews, you're getting a tiny, tiny, little, tiny glimpse into the organization. And it is always true that however you feel about the company, right now in the process of the interview is not going to be how you feel about the company the day after you start. I know that sounds really negative. It's not meant to be negative. It's neither good nor bad. It's just your impressions of the organization are wrong <laughs> and they will change and they will change quickly and they will change once, once you start. And so when you have an opportunity to kind of get an inside view into the organization, the culture, the people, it's important to be aware of that. Because as we said in the, the Becoming a Boss episode, maybe it's not the right place for you. And that's fine. It's, it's, I think it's important for candidates to know that it, it's not going to benefit them or the company if they put themselves in a situation that just is not a fit. Have you ever felt like you've been in that spot where like you really wanted it, you really wanted it, but it just didn't feel right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I can Tell me about a time when there was something that you really, really wanted. Oh, I don't know. Um, I'm thinking kind of beyond an interview question, but more or an interview scenario, but similar, like a conversation with someone that's uncomfortable. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Damn, I stumped you. I know you did stump me. I do want to mention one thing, though, that I got complimented about in an interview, I did, I did end, end up getting the job and working there for a few years. It was a great job. Um, in the interview, I paused a lot to think about the question. And I was really in my head about, about it because it's awkward and you're sitting there in silence while I'm like, so I'm like, so they ask the question and I'm like, I right, just give me a minute to think about this. So they're, you know, 
awkwardly 10 seconds goes by and then I answer the question and I left that interview feeling not good about it. And that was one of the reasons why I didn't feel good about it. Um, because I'm like, they don't, they, they're probably thinking like this girl doesn't know what she's talking about because she's taking too long to answer the question. Um, but after they hired me and I had a conversation with them about it, they actually said that was something they appreciated about me because it showed that I was thoughtful and careful at how I choose my words and how I communicate. So yeah, I don't know if that's useful for the listeners here, but um, everything we that... say is usable. If they're listening yes, and they're still in the video right now <laughs> and they yeah. just hit the subscribe and the thing, <laughs> it's all we useful. Can yeah. We could say anything. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's one of my biggest takeaways from an interview um, out of the interviews that I've done, which haven't been too many, but silence um, is powerful. And it, mm -hmm. I only learned that in the like last five years, I had this um, VP level boss, and he um, was the master of silence. Oh. Makes me think of the song. Uh, the sound of silence. The sound of silence. And it was very uncomfortable. And it's that, like, in a meeting in particular, which now I just thought of another topic, meetings. Um, in a meeting in particular, silence can be really powerful. If anybody's been in a meeting with me, they know that I treat silence like it's some odd disease. And it's, like, needs to go away as quickly as possible. I've gotten better at it, but I've also seen the power of it. And so, but I think what you're talking about is goes back to like how you answer questions, mm -hmm. because if you don't understand the question and you just kind of roll with whatever you think it is without clarifying, that can be seen as a problem. You, you right. want to make sure you ask clarifying questions. Right. Um, but also, if if there's a question where, for example, like I was talking about a situation that maybe you may or may not have been in, then you do have you you you've been purposeful. You've you've thought and analyzed and and seen it how that question you know showed has shown up in your life. Maybe you don't have a situation, and I've. I've interviewed folks, behavioral interviews, where this, this has happened before, where m maybe you don't have an example in your career life, especially when you're starting out your, your career. And the advice I've given is to acknowledge that, but say, can I give you a personal example? If you have something like within your family, a family, like if it's a question about conflict and you had to resolve conflict and it was within your family, you use that instead. I think that that shows that you've thought through it and you haven't tried to fake it because <laughs> that does not come off well. And, I, and, and tech companies value people being genuine and true to themselves and true to where they are in their careers and how to advance their careers. And it doesn't help you to pretend like, what is that stupid term? Fake it until you make it. Yeah. I mean, that's really great if the person doesn't know you're faking it. But if the person knows you're faking it, then that's not going to help you at all. Right. There is some value to it. Mm -hmm. So there is this thing called the STAR method. Because if we didn't put an acronym behind it, then it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> uh, I don't. The reason the STAR method is useful is because it's a model that's easy to remember. And it is helpful for when you answer the questions so that you structure the response in a meaningful way. And what it talks about in like Google behavioral interviews, you'll find this everywhere. Um, what is the situation? So what was the situation that you were in? What had to be done as a result of the situation? What were the tasks? 
<laughs> what are the actions you took? So tasks, what you did, what you actually ended up doing. So the actual activity, describe the activity. I know those two things seem similar, but one is like how you framed it. One is what you actually did. And then one was the outcome. Like what happened as a, as a result of your actions. But I think it's missing something. And because Sorry, a lot of the, the R result. Yeah. Okay. Um, What's it, what is it missing? Well, I think a lot of behavioral questions are also about like, what did you learn right. after, after the outcome, good or bad, but especially bad, what did you learn? Like, what did you do different after that? Adaptability is an attribute that is widely covered. Very important from my perspective. I've always felt like, you know, when you hire talent, it's more important to find folks like it, it's not necessarily important to find the best developer advocate in the world per the developer advocate standards, which would be like following and speaking and all of that stuff. It's more important to find the person who ha is inspired and driven and interested in educating developer communities, because that's something that is harder to teach. I can teach people how to speak. Even if you think I suck at speaking, first of all, you're wrong, but I can do that. Um, I can teach people how to get a following. I can teach people how to create content. So I can teach all of that. What is harder to teach is that like core inspiration there. And part of that is a willingness to adapt and learn. It's true for relationships too. You have to be willing to grow, adapt, and learn. Those are more important to me than like the specific skills of the job, because a lot of that is much easier to teach. So I do think learn is a missed sterile, star, sterile, star, sterile. <laughs> sterile? <Yeah. laughs> uh, so that's the star method. Mm -hmm. Um, and here's another trick that I really like that you should start today. If you do anything from this YouTube video, start this today because I do it as well. Have a list somewhere of situations that were stressful or super exciting or something you were really proud of. Like you have to cue into this moment. You're like, I just grappled with this thing and maybe you're in the middle of it. That's fine. Or maybe you're reflecting after the fact, like a conflict you had to deal with at work or a presentation that went horribly bad or a technical incident. And it's literally a part of a postmortem. And it was a particularly stressful technical incident, but it could have gone worse if you didn't do some of the things that you did that were successful. So cue into those things, write them down and describe them in as much detail as you can, because human memories are not very good. Mine in particular is not very good. And in behavioral interviewing, details are a very useful tool. The more detailed you can be, very often will we'll help you. And, and folks will appreciate that they for sure will not appreciate generalities and like vague broad it went well we did well why why did you do well? what told you that you did well and what i would suggest then is before you do any of these interviews especially if you can like group them by growth and adaptability and like these categories read through your list so that they're in the back of your mind so that you you have them ready to respond with because the reality is you do have a limited amount of time and the time can go really fast that's something that that i think everybody should do right away and i also think that during your interviews before your interviews you should have a sense of what Think from the perspective of you being the interviewer. And sometimes that's how you can practice because 
what is the outcome besides they send you, they throw an offer at your face before you even hang up on the Zoom and it's a million dollars a year. Besides that, what do you want them leaving thinking about you and your skills? And keep those in the back of your mind because you want those to shine through as well. You're combating the stress of the situation, which is very hard. And honestly, the only way I know how to get past that is just to expose yourself to it a bunch, like with professional speaking. The only way I knew how to be less nervous is just to do it a bunch and eventually realize sometimes you're going to have a really bad talk. And it's just going to happen and no matter what it will, all, it'll happen. But having that stuff in the back of your mind can, can help you prepare. Ask me a behavioral interview question, Ashton. Uh, so you have three pieces of cake. No, that's not a behavioral interview question. That's a brain teaser. With, again, like um, in Tell me about your strengths and weaknesses. No, that's not a behavioral interview. I know, I'm messing with you. Messing well, but I like that example. So that's the kind of example you would get like in finance still today. Right. Like, I'm good yeah. at everything. Yeah. Um. Behavioral question, yeah, so. Um, oh, I, I, when I've interviewed folks before, I actually asked them how they prepared for the interview today. I didn't. <laughs> I've heard some pretty interesting responses from it. Yeah, okay. uh, I, I, I don't know if that's a behavioral interview question, but I like to hear. I, I, I kind of, I don't think it's a behavioral because it's not oh. a, a a situation that, that mm, you, yeah you're but I, I do like, like it as well i think it's because mm. well but there's it's also this pretty... bias to how you sh ought to prepare like you sit in front and you like have the i don't prepare for anything that way mm -hmm. i prepare by yeah. like, pacing around my house yeah i had someone tell me that they like went for a walk and meditated and all of that which i thought was really interesting because you know most of the time like you know what a canned answer is going to be it's like i researched and i know all about you and i did this and blah 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 um i remember I had someone tell me like i had i met someone for coffee who knows about your organization and stuff and i thought that was an you know that to me just tell told me that they care a little bit more about, you know, just like, I did some research. He's like, no, I met for some little coffee so I could talk through this and you know what I mean? And so just, I think it kind of tells you a little bit about their, their personality yeah. and attributes because, you know, you, if like, to me, just telling them that, oh, I did research, like that's not, <laughs> you know what I mean? That feels like more like a canned answer, but yeah. yeah, it, it just tell, yeah, it just tells me a little bit about how how they process, how they think, how they prepare for things. You know what I mean? So, yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. You reminded me of another thing that, that, like, I hope most interviews have a chance for you to ask the interviewer a question. Right. And I've always really appreciated those questions. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I tend, just like I expect the interviewee to be themselves, I'm going to be myself as well. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how not to be. And I think it's important for them to see that. But I also think it's, it's similar to what you said. It's interesting to see how they decided to prepare. Mm -hmm. For me, when I say, do you have any questions? It's interesting to see how they address that. And maybe it's a little unfair because if you're in a stressful situation like this and you haven't done it a lot, you might be apt to be like, no, I don't have any questions. I'm good. Right. If you, I think it's good to kind of have questions in the back of your mind. Honestly, yeah. I, I think it's useful and they can be tough ones too. Mm -hmm. And cause I like the hard questions. And so, um, it's, it's worth maybe jotting those down mm -hmm. and knowing them, but gauge how you're feeling. I understand like it's a little unfair that I lean into that kind of stuff. I lean into pressure. I lean into stress. I, I, I don't know. It makes me kind of like a mental thrill seeker, but, mm -hmm. um, 
but I think being able to show that you want to understand the organization better is useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, it, I think it's good to be prepared with a few things that you want to make sure you leave knowing, especially if they didn't come up. And if you're like stumped or if they answered, like you got the answers to those questions that you were planning on to, I think it's good to just keep the conversation going. Be like, I did actually have a question about this, but we addressed it, you know, unless you want to tell me a little bit more about that or whatever, just so that they know that you like are thoughtful about it. Because, you know, if they answered your questions you, and you just say, no, I don't have any questions, then, you know you're kind of closing the door there a little bit, but yeah. I think it's helpful even just to kind of keep, if you're stumped or if you're like, I don't know, just good to kind of keep the conversation going a little bit more. So you have that a little bit more back and forth rather than maybe you just answering the questions for that whole time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's an opportunity to like have a, a little bit more of a conversation. Right. I do have final words of wisdom, but yes, let's 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 take a look at our our drawing here. I wasn't. Uh, there's a lot of detail, a lot of deeds today. A lot of a lot of words. Um, you know, I I sort of did. We started talking about things during as well. So how to prepare and during. I stuck that down there. Some things to think about. Um, Is that then, your like slip in trick? Just like. Yeah. Just add it in. Just ooh, it looks like it was supposed to be there the whole time. Sticky note. Yes, sticky notes. Um, results or uh, sorry, star method results there at the end. Got to finish that. What did you learn? Add that at the end there too, and then make a list down here. And then silence ended up being a big part of it. I didn't need to make it so large, but that's really messed up, Ashley, because that was your thing. <laughs> Just put Ashton said all over that. Yeah. You said silence is powerful. You only said after you you silence. talked about getting yes. complimented on being silent. Yeah. What My if we one... did a podcast where we just were like silent? Would that work? <laughs> yeah. Awkward. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I love right, it. Give us, your, give us your words of Here's uh, my words of find, wisdom. Your parting thoughts. It's less words of wisdom. Here's my words of inspiration. Okay. 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 Interviewing is stressful. Yes. Everybody has to do it. And sometimes you're interviewing and you don't know it. And it also depends on, you know, like the seniority, the seniority, I hate the term, but like the seniority of the role that you're going for. First of all, it's even more stressful when it doesn't go out. It doesn't turn out the way you plan. That mm -hmm. might happen. But the reality is because you've done it, like you will be better prepared for future interviews. So, so you've gained something. It's not a net loss. Right. And if the organization doesn't show you enough respect to tell you, give you something more than a, like an automated email, maybe it's not the best place for your work. So like you might've dodged a bullet there, right. but if you got to the interview point, to the point where you're doing an interview, you're probably one of five, maybe three, people like you're a small uh, there are roles that are like reoccurring roles where they're just constantly churning through them and they have just hundreds and hundreds and th maybe even thousands of candidates if you got to that point of interviewing you you got really far like that is a win that is a success already and and you should take the time to acknowledge and and earn those kudos because um, mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't feel like that. So take the time to realize how you've gotten where you've gotten and it matters. Mm -hmm.